Welcome to Melias the Story Collector Web TV, where each week we bring you inspiring stories from courageous individuals about the moments and experiences that have shaped their lives. In this episode, we get to talk with the beautiful Carolyn as we discuss what depression has been like for her and the cure that she found for her own depression. I think we need to speak about depression more. I know there's a lot of people out there speaking about depression, but they're not talking about how that links to spirituality and what that means about who you are at your core. And I know for me that I know, I guess the realization only really came recently, even though I went through depression many, many years ago, I hit rock bottom in 2012 and went on a healing journey. But it was only recently that I realized that a lot of my issues were, I didn't have the courage to stand up and be who I was. And I didn't have the courage to come out of the spiritual closet, so to speak. So growing up in a traditional Catholic family and being scared to own that I loved crystals and angels and um, oracle cards and Reiki and intergalactic, everything, just anything spiritual. And I was squashing that part of myself. I was hiding away from it. I was working in an, a corporate job even though I was working part-time as a kinesiologist. And I think the, kines the studies through kinesiology really helped me, it, it polarised me. And I realised there was this real gap between the corporate work I was doing, which I used to love, and this kinesiology modality that I'd started studying. And it had opened up this whole new spiritual, actually it didn't open up a spiritual world for me. It actually allowed me to tap into it in a different way. And I guess that's what I want to talk about, how depression and courage really go hand in hand. And a lot of depression, overcoming depression is really facing who you are and having the courage to go, this is me. This is the stuff that no longer serves me. And I now need to change and create a new life for myself. And I don't know what that looks like. And I don't know who's going to stay in my life, but I, I need to have the courage to step up, step up and be me. That's awesome. That's awesome. I love it. Oh, this is going to be a great conversation. Okay, so where did it all start for you? You said you were in a corporate job. Is that yes, when the so, depression started? Look, I think I always had low self-worth. I still remember the first time I bought an essential oil, I was like 12 years old and walked into a chemist to get lavender for a headache. And I remember loving crystals, I think when I was about 15 and wanting to buy some rose quartz and, and uh, amethyst bracelets. But I was going to a Catholic school. As I said, I, I had a lot of um, that sort of dogma around me. And I could never own all of that with my school friends. So I think it started right back then when I never felt like I fit in. I was always trying desperately to be like everybody else and fit in and go under the radar. And I think that's where it all started because my self-worth was, there was, it was non-existence. And that, that sort of built up over the years. And when I went, to, it was actually when my daughter started primary school that it, I guess it reignited because I was suddenly faced with school mums and I felt like I was back in the schoolyard. So that's when the depression started to really kick in. The corporate job in some respects helped me because it took my mind off it. But yes, eventually it polarised me and I realised this is what I used to love and this is who is me, this spiritual person is me and I need to own that now. So it was part of the, the, the process, but it was really the socialising with people that, and not being myself, that really, um, I guess, is where, where it stemmed from. And that, that schoolyard aspect, when you come back to it as a parent, you think people are going to mature, but then you come back and they're not. They're exactly the same as they were in high school. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and I was exact I, I went back to being in high school mode and being that kid that just didn't want to rock the boat and wanted to fit in and and so I noticed even within myself I thought I had had all this adult grow growth and I didn't. <laughs> That's interesting. So what came up for you then when you were in this realm of parents at school? Like how did that really kickstart the depression? I think it was just wanting to be invited to the parties, wanting to be with the in crowd. And then realising that I wasn't always invited out and feeling really bad and putting in money for other people's birthday presents, but then I didn't get a birthday present back. It was those little things that sort of just added up. But the irony of it was when I was invited, I didn't feel like I fit in anyway because that wasn't me. 
And it's no disrespect to people that want to drink and, and dance and party all night, but that's not who I am. And I don't think it ever was. So even when I was invited, I didn't feel like I felt, I didn't feel like I fit in. But when I wasn't invited, I felt like I was being excluded. So I had this battle going on trying to, trying to be this person, but it wasn't me anyway. And it was that disconnect. But how bad did your depression get then? Did it spiral from there? It did. It got really bad. My brother had met, um, my youngest brother had met his new girlfriend and they were, they were getting married and I felt like I was left out of that. So besides the school mums, I was feeling left out of my family. Um, I was feeling disconnected from everyone. And eventually it got to a Saturday morning where I had had enough and I took a handful of sleeping tablets because I didn't want to be here anymore. And it wasn't, it was interesting because I didn't have, I want to kill myself. I just had, I don't want to be here. And I knew what that meant, but I didn't go any further. I don't want to be here. I don't care what that means. I just don't want to be here. And I still remember that day. And I, you know, I've got two beautiful kids and a loving husband and I was still depressed and I still didn't want to be here. And I guess that was the catalyst for me because clearly I'm still here and uh, something changed in me that day. And I, chose to go on a journey I think part of me said well this didn't work so you know you need to do something else and I rang a spiritual counselor that I had seen many years ago and I think the minute I walked into sessions with her and started her weekly personal development classes I knew I was where I was meant to be so for me it was really delving into who I was spiritually and owning my shit and going oh, I get it that's my problem okay that's my problem. Oh, now I need to have the courage to change it so I can, because my problem was I would not go on the journey of life. I was running away from the adventures because I was scared of not being accepted. It's always for me, it's always been about, I need to be accepted. Wow. Wow. That's really been underpinning everything in your life, hasn't it? Yeah, it really has. And I guess now it's, I've gotten to a point where, and, and running a business is interesting because again, you want to be accepted, but you need to put yourself out there and be different. So even running my business has challenged me to step up again and own myself and, and you know, have the purple hair or, because I do have purple, although it does fade a bit, but, um, or, you know, putting up videos on Facebook or YouTube was a big one for me because I felt safe in my group, but I didn't feel safe on YouTube, but I'm doing it. So that whole needing to fit in, I've sort of now gone the other way and I've really learnt that this is me. And I don't need to fit in anymore. I can just be me. And every now and then it creeps in, but I'm able to recognise it really quickly and sort of talk myself out of it and, yeah, I guess move forward. So have you had any instances of depression since then? No. Um, the way I describe it is there's a line here where you're sort of neutral and I still live down here. Uh, I'm not always high, I'll be honest with you. I, don't, I, I live up here now. I do sometimes come down to neutral if I start to dip, I usually know it's because I'm not looking after myself. So I need more sleep. I need to go have a bath. I need to start saying no. If it dips and it lasts for more than two or three days, I'm straight out there to a kinesiologist or my spiritual healer for a healing. So I don't allow it to go that low. I do sometimes get down. I'll, I'll be honest. It does go up and down. I don't think it will ever disappear 100%. But now I recognize it and I know straight away I'm onto it. I need to go to a healer and do what I need to do to um, bring myself out of it. Wow. Do you feel then that a lot of the depression in society is being misdiagnosed? Honestly, I do. Um, I do have friends that are depressed and some of them, um, I can't help them. I, I can honestly say I can't help them, but there are others that I see and clients that I see that I can see within themselves that if they just had the courage to see who they are. And it's interesting. I think the biggest issue I see is, people wanting to be who they are, but afraid of what their parents would say. Mm. And it's interesting because they're adults already, but there's still this whole, um, this whole perception or this whole, something's holding them back and they don't want to be themselves because they're scared of what their parents will say because their parents were a certain way. And, you know, their parents are either very corporate and earning lots of money and you have to work hard or you you know, our parents influence us so much. And we forget that once we're adults, we can be who we want to be. And it's breaking that that barrier, I guess. And yes, I would say that a lot of the depression is um, people not having the courage to really go, this is me, whatever that is, this is me. 
Mm, now I've got the song from The Greatest Showman stuck in my head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love it. I actually love that song. It's such a powerful song. It is. It is. And I'll find a lot of those sorts of songs work really well for depression as well because that's what it is, just owning who you are, no matter how uncomfortable that may feel. <laughs> and the irony of it is, is we're so busy trying to fit in with everyone else and worrying what other people think that 99% of the population is worrying about themselves and don't even care about, you know, you being unique. They're not going to judge you because they're too busy dealing with their own stuff. Yeah. So that's the irony. You sort of think, oh, people are going to see what I'm wearing or what I look like. They're too self-absorbed anyway because they're dealing with their own stuff. Yeah. And anyone yep. that does decide to judge, that's just their way of deflecting not dealing with their own stuff. Yeah. So how did you address your parents then? Because we've been talking about that inner child going, mummy, daddy, love me. (laughs) How did you address that within you? Um, It's funny because when when I was just started owning who I was, they loved me anyway. There was no backlash from my, you know, from my parents to my brothers. Um, They just accepted me. Every now and then I might get a a sideward joke about being woo-woo or a witch or or something just because they want to pigeonhole me. I actually don't care. I actually doesn't bother me because now I know they accept me. They know who I am and I'm comfortable being who I am and that's okay. And it's interesting because for me, my brothers work together and they work with dad. So I've always felt even left out from my family because of that because they're all builders and brickies and clearly I'm not. So every now and then it will rear its head because they spend a lot more time together. But then I think, no, but this is my life and I'm having fun. So... I'm not stuck anywhere. I can be who I want when I want to be, you know, so it's me. I like it. So when you do have those moments, what techniques do you go to to help get you back to being who you are? Um, I, I write a blog explaining how people shouldn't treat other people, but it's not a blog that ever gets released. So my way of dealing with it is you should not treat people like this. Um, and then I work through it and that helps me release it out of me. And then, so I've got, I don't know how much writing is somewhere that will never get released or maybe it will and I'll rejig it. But they're sort of coming from an angry stance because it's my way of downloading. So I'm a big believer of downloading it out of here and I process it by writing a blog and educating people how not to treat people. (laughs) I like it. I like it. So that way you're getting it out of your your conscious mind and then just releasing it. Yep. I like it. I like it. That's a great technique. So then through this journey, what has your definition of courage changed? Has it just solidified what courage means to you? I think it has. I think it's solidified it. I, I, it's funny because I never thought I was courageous when I, cause I, because I did write a book about my journey through depression. So it's really, it's really laid out. It's really bare. It's raw. It's my journey. And a lot of people said you, I was courageous at the time. And I just thought, oh, well, I'm just helping people. But looking back, I think, being courageous is almost, it's something that can, that comes up nearly every day in terms of just stepping up and being who I am. So it, it does get easier, but then I do believe that the universe says, oh, this is easy. Here's something a little bit more hard. Let's, let's really kick you up a notch. Um, so I think for, for me, courageousness is, it's, it's an evolution and you can just become more and more courageous as you go along the path.